Hi and welcome to another Married to Reselling video. My name's Faye. I'm Simon. Together we are resellers on eBay and Amazon. Coming up in this video, we have the usual picking from the barn. So we're showing you some recent sales. And also we're gonna tell you how to sell clothing on eBay on a personal account as a business. But first, let's see some sales. Okay, we've got this vintage Alfro London little girl ornament figurine, bisque with pigtails. This cost 15p and sold in five months for £4.49 plus post. That was from auction. Just sent off from that. Nice. Then we've got this Elizabethan China, the Nativity 1984 collector's Christmas plate. This cost £2.90 from auction, sold for £6 plus post. That's a high cost price, but as you know, we do list things that sell. Um, there would have been more profitable items in that lot. Then we have this La Cruze Cone Stovetop Kettle, 1.6 litre with a whistling spout. Whistle. Whistling whistle, yeah. That cost 74p and sold for 29.99 within a couple of weeks. Oh, and that plate took four months to sell. And this kettle was from auction. Then we've got these Royal Genware rectangle plates, four of them. They cost £2.2p and from auction. Took two months to sell for £17.49. And then we've got this vintage Royal Worcester floral bouquet trinket dish with lid. That cost 36p. Took three and a half months to sell for £8.77 plus post. We've got these vintage knitting and crochet patterns. A job lot, 150 plus sheets and books for kids, women, men, you <laughs> name it. Uh, cost like pence, sold for 35 99 and then we've got this antique Norwegian silver twisted spoon and that cost 53p from auction and sold within two weeks for 13.99. Right, the Leonardo collection glass cutting board with robins and winter scene on it. That's on the shelf, I think. Yeah. Nice one. That cost £2 and 2p from auction. Sold for £13.49 plus post. That's going GSP to Ireland. They sent a message saying, please can I buy this? International. And then they bought it. Oh. Uh, this one has not got a skew. It's from June. It's in a box. It's a plate. Oof. What sort of plate? A Wedgwood plate. It's blue and white and it's in a blue box. Could this. It could be. It's a calendar. Is it a mouldy flat? Is it a mouldy box? Not like sure. Compton and Woodhouse. No, Wedgwood. Is that from 2001? Wedgwood. Has it got two? Uh, Lift a bit of paper off the middle. Trying. Yes. Cool. That's it. Wedgwood plate, blue white calendar, 2001. The Abbey, Compton and Compton and what? Woodhouse. Yeah. That cost a pound. That has been listed for nine months and sold for five pound eighty plus post in a mouldy box. It was mouldy mm -hmm. before. Yeah, that, I'll give that a um, good as new. Crate fifteen. Yeah. Sophie Conran Arbor bowls, four of them, cream, Port Marion for anthropology. These cost two pound and two p. So they would have been in with that Robin board from auction, sold for twenty pounds on offer. Crate five. Crate. Crate five. Yeah. Vintage Churchill Chartwell Collection Meal Fleur Dinner Plates times six. We've got pink and white and flowers. Yeah. Does Meal Fleur mean millions of flowers? Thousands, probably. Those. Yeah, that's them. They cost a total of £1.38 for six, and they sold for £25.19 and 19p within a month and a half they were from auction as well then we've got crate 10 yeah a summer chintz sauce boat johnson brothers so it's like for a gravy boat but we haven't got the jug it's just the base that was a facebook market pickup place what <laughs> that'll do yeah from uh six months ago yeah. that cost two pound 14 sold for six pound plus post i think we've only got the cups and saucers left Put that on there. Then we've got two tripods. These were from auction, cost nothing, sold for £8.98 plus post. And we've had them a year. And then in home, it's the vintage pillowcase floral, blue, green and white cotton blend with flowers on it. Thinks of lavender. <laughs> cost 52p. 
Sold for £4.49 plus post within six months. This just sold whilst packing. It's a Meekin Old Willow meat platter, 12 inch oval. That cost £4.84, which is a lot of money, but there would have been something in that lot that we wanted at the time. And this is just fodder. This the sold for £13.12. Turn it around. We have this 100% cotton King duvet set that we picked up at a garage sale recently for £4. And that sold for £25 on the other site within a week. Is that plus post? Yes. Crate 27. Yes. It's the vintage Port Merion Botanic Garden Quiche Flandish, nine inches. Uh. Did you know we sold that? No. Oh. Took an offer today. Cost 43p. Been listed for three and a half months, sold for 12 pounds. Then we have a pen. It's a silver colored pen. And it's a vintage canoe, K-A-N-O-E. Ballpoint pen, uh, made in Japan in the 1970s. No ink, but I declared that in the title and in the product description. It cost 44p, took three and a half months to sell for four pound plus post. There you go. Yeah, great 24. Yeah. A vintage West Germany vase, green. Front left, front left. <laughs> cost 20p. That also took three and a half months to sell for £13.49. Is it like vine leaves and grapes? Yeah. So for clothing sellers that cross list, if you use Zip Sale, you might have received an email this week about transitioning over from one account to the other. Hi all, sometimes the need to change your marketplace account pops up. Zip Sale has a way to assist you in moving things over smoothly and easily to allow for a seamless transition to the new account. So basically what they mean is you sell clothes on your business account, you want to move it all over to your personal account and this is how to do it. But why would you want to move it over to your personal account? Mm, don't know. <laughs> so as usual, I've been reading lots of Instagram posts, Facebook group posts and chit chat about selling clothes on eBay on a personal account with zero fees. We already know that a lot of business sellers are going to be doing this. They're going to be moving over from a business account to a personal account to sell clothes. So we've seen a lot of conflicting information about what you can and can't do with a personal account. So we just thought to make it easier for you, if you're planning on moving all of your clothes from your business account over to your personal account, we thought we'd just give you some tips, pointers of what you can and can't do on that personal account. If you're a business seller, you might assume that personal accounts can't have a seller hub but that is not true. Yeah, so if you're used to using the seller hub on eBay with your business account, you know, that's where you've got your orders, your listings, your marketing tab, your traffic, your sales, and all of that. With a personal account, you can still do all of that. Just got to pop in seller hub in the help and activate it there. There are other features as well that you can use on a personal account that you'll be used to using on a business account. So for example, you can still do all of the marketing stuff. You can still use coupons. You can still do sale and markdown. You can do all of those promotions just as before. So that's really handy, isn't it? For a business seller that's gonna use their personal account. They're gonna get all those free listings. So you get like a thousand free listings every month and you've got zero fees on your clothing. You can also do promoted listings. So you can advertise your product just like you can on the business account yeah so you can do advanced and standard dynamic fixed rate you can do all of that stuff so that is a really good benefit for business sellers that are going to sell clothing on their personal account there is one drawback you can't be a top rated seller on oh, a personal no. account yeah so uh gonna gonna lose out on that that means that you can't do the 50% or up to 50% partial refunds if you want. So, you know, when someone sends something back and it's battered, you won't be able to do a 50% refund on that anymore. That's okay though, because on a personal account, you don't have to do re offer refunds, do you? Exactly, you don't even have to offer returns anyway. So it doesn't, uh, really matter. doesn't make a difference, does it? So yeah. that's good. That's another great benefit for a business seller that is gonna be selling their clothing on a personal account. Now, I've also seen a lot of people talking about getting restricted when you sell so many items. So when you get to like a thousand pounds worth of sales or sell 30 items in a month or something like that, that you're gonna then be restricted and that you're gonna then be forced to move over to a business account. But that's not quite true because as we know there's quite a few people out there in, in the reselling community especially who do sell full-time on a personal account with thousands of feedbacks thousands of sales uh, on a personal account so yeah that's cool mm. 
even better. Of course, you can still use business policies. So business policies is where you can set up your different shipping templates. You can set up different returns templates, although you wouldn't need to do that as a personal account. So that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but also your payments as well. So you can set up different policies for different scenarios. Uh, you can still do all of that. That is called business policies. That's and you funny, can still it? use business policies on your personal yeah, accounts. So that's really good, isn't it? For yeah, brilliant. those businesses that are going to be selling on a personal account it's funny how they call it business policies as well one thing i do think must be coming on the horizon in terms of e-commerce we're very very early on aren't we in the in the development of e-commerce they've only been around for what ebay since like 1990 Something. whatever it is seven or something yeah, not long in the grand scheme of the history of the human race is absolutely nothing so i foresee that it won't be long until all of these marketplaces just drop a particular type of fee so whether that's referral fees or listing fees i just feel like with the changes that are happening and everyone's trying to react different marketplaces are trying to react to those changes at some point someone is going to say do you know what no fees we're going to make our money off on-site advertising like netflix advertising whatever it might be advertisers are going to pay us to put their content on our marketplace i feel that that is the way it's going to go I've just seen Amazon are reducing oh, yeah. their clothing fees from 15% to 8% for clothing. They call it low cost clothing, so clothing under £15. And I feel like that is some sort of reaction to what eBay have done with their clothing fees. So just like, you know, when you had a mobile phone before, you had to pay for your calls, pay for your minutes, pay for your data. Now, oh, you, just have your a, text. now you just have to, you just have a contract, you just pay like a monthly fee and you get unlimited text, unlimited data, unlimited uh, calls. I mean, obviously not everyone does that, but it's very, very common now. And just a decade ago, it wasn't. So I really feel that that is where this is headed. As Simon was saying earlier about uh, personal sellers kind of reaching a threshold and being forced to move over to a business account. If you watch our videos, you'll know we've been doing some house clearance and all of all of the things we've been selling are for personal reasons. They're not We're not making money out of it. We, we sell on a personal account. They're not business transactions for yeah. us. We have a business account for our business transactions, a personal one for non-profit yeah. related sales we're just like other people we sell bits and bobs from around the house and so we don't need them anymore and also we've been concentrating on it a lot lately because in the last month we have been selling a lot of stuff through this house clearance to raise funds for the person who's moved we we're using the seller hub actively and it's really great we've been able to promote listings um, we've been able to send offers and coupons. We've had different business policies. Uh, it's just been just like using a business eBay account. It's been totally problem free, seamless. Yeah, ex and the big difference is no insertion fees. We haven't listed the clothing yet, but when we do, obviously we'll benefit from no clothing fees there as well. Yeah, win-win. So now that the dust has settled on the zero fees for personal sellers, let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about all the opportunities that these personal accounts also have, you know, all the marketing, the coupons, uh, all of those benefits. Let us know how you feel about that. Is that something you're planning on doing? I know a lot of you have been interested in the house clearance um, story that we've been sort of telling you over the last few videos. Uh, Friday we hired a van and I drove the van Simon sort of mentioned it in a previous video and um, it was the biggest van you could get on a standard license I think and it was huge and I'm not gonna lie I was a little bit anxious about it for about a week I uh, kept it to myself pretty much you all right can I get a lift to Tonington services please <laughs> but it was absolutely fine I could have driven with about 15 pavlovas in the back and not one of them would have got broken <laughs> we drive around with pavlovas often uh, it's a bit of a joke. Friday was all about clearing out the house uh, of big items, getting stuff to the tip. So we had to obviously uh, apply for a tip permit. And to do that, you needed a registration or you had to tick the box to say that you were hiring a vehicle. We hired a vehicle. So we had to have a rental agreement in the same name as the person on the tip permit. We also had to get a code from the DVLA uh, to do with our license as well. So we had to make sure all that was in place. And we picked the van up just after 9am on Friday and we dropped it off at 5.33 on Friday evening. 
we filled it twice didn't we once full of furniture for the tip and mattresses and bed frames and drawers and desks some of which we um took apart before we put in the van and the second lot was garden items so big plant pots there must have been 20 plant pots some of them were huge all with plants in better fall out <laughs> yeah don't fall out i'm gonna I'll back it up in case you do so we can get it on film we also had benches and tables and we were dropping off at different places uh, of people that were having them uh, but we also had a number of items collected i listed on ebay and i listed on facebook marketplace large items we had garden statues we had tv units we had uh, bird baths we had bedside tables kneely chair thing uh, we had all sorts of things and that went perfectly didn't it mm. all of it got picked up either on time or early so we were really lucky must have been some sort of national record to have so many sales on facebook where everybody turned up either when they said they would or early yeah or Unbel early. unbelievable yeah it was but i was good the night before i messaged everyone saying looking forward to meeting you tomorrow at whatever time they'd said uh, for pickup of blah 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 and that worked out i think that helped if those people hadn't picked those items up we'd have had to have done another run in the van i think um to like a charity shop or something um but yeah we were really pleased we were worn out there was a mm. lot of running up and down stairs mm. uh only one injury and that was me smashed a desktop on my shin at the tip if anyone gives you a hard time if you abide by the rules and get your tip permit and get your rental agreement for your van and everything don't stand for any nonsense by staff at the tip because they did, there's some jobs worth there yeah. isn't there yeah because phase driving license is in a different area different uh recycling center area to to the house clearance and therefore that where we were taking stuff to the tip they were like oh you know you should have gone to biggles way not amp till uh so it's a fair to sort of explain that but yeah they one guy was very very helpful big up derek if you're watching this thanks he even helped us unload which was a great help uh, but funny story so um we dropped off two mattresses um at the tip one of them was sadly soiled and um, my mom did not want us moving mattresses um that were soiled so she got these huge mattress bags off Amazon to put the mattresses in so we could move them easily. And that was great. One was soiled, one wasn't, but they both went in bags. Anyway, when we got to the tip, um, Derek was like, what are these bags? And we sort of explained. And um, we, you and Derek put these mattresses in the in one of the huge skips. And then and all... The van on top. Yeah, and stuff on top. other people's rubbish. And then off we went down the ramp to the next section where you drop off your paint and everything. And this guy pulled up and said, oh, anything wrong with that mattress? And you were like, uh, one's soiled, one's not. But yeah, and he's like, all right, thanks, mate. And then about five minutes later, while we're still unloading, he drives round again <laughs> with his boot open with a mattress and a bag hanging out the back. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the lady in the car was like, did we get the right one? Is that the soiled one? Did we get the soiled one? And so I sort of lifted it up and had a look. No, I think you got the right one. And they were like, oh, it's gone to a great home. Thanks so much. Then someone would have had to have climbed into that, you know, those big skips at the tip to, to fish that out. I know. Um, but fair, fair play to them because it, I, we'd think it probably had never been slept on if they, mm. as long as they got the right one. With the tip, when you apply for your permit, you have to tick a lot of boxes to tell them what you're bringing. You tick like mattresses, sideboards, tables, everything. So they knew what date we were coming and what we were bringing. And this jobs worth at the tip was still sort of grumpy about it. Oh, we haven't got room. Well, I'm sorry, I've, I've hired a van for today. You're getting our rubbish. Yeah, he said you're going to fill my skips up. Good. Yeah. Isn't that what they're there for? Yeah. That's the thing, you know, you're really trying to do the right thing. No wonder people go around fly tipping. They do, a, there's a, quite a lot of it around here because we're very rural. There's roads around here that probably like take two cars in a day. And uh, you try and do the right thing and you just get a load of rap for it. As far as going to the house, Simon and I are done. We don't have to go back there anymore. Uh, everything that we want to sell has either been listed for sale, sold, or still to be listed and here. Uh, the swords are still here and they will the be scary corner <laughs> they will be going to the sword specialist sometime this summer when we drive north um on a little trip but otherwise we've had some really good sales we've sold an argos catalog we've sold automatic pill dispensers we've sold drop lots of thimbles we've sold uh sewing patterns we've sold completed cross stitches in frames uh, we've sold watercolour paintings, oil paintings, oil paintings, Kindles, Kindles cameras, yeah. TVs, telephones, three TVs were sold, printer, two printers, 
Yes. Cuddly toys. <laughs> um, we have sold loads, lipsticks, blushes, all sorts of things. And do you know what? My mum, bless her, um, she is sort of, we keep her abreast of it all. She's like, wow, wow. She's really learning because she would have got rid of a load of this stuff. She'd have either been dipped or sent it to the charity shop. I mean, the beach towel, that went for over £40. Mm, yeah, the Jessica Rabbit towel. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's been... Um, a real learning curve for her she it's kind of nice as well because she gets to understand exactly what we do it's not a case of just yeah i'll sell that I'll sell that she she can see the photo she can see the listings the titles she understands what it takes to pack it up it the, takes the patience involved yeah and just <laughs> yeah, the, like yeah. you can list whatever you like but you know the, the next stage you need a buyer yeah and we don't control the buyer no and then the obscure things that are sold and also the people that say they're going to buy things or like buy it so she's like, oh, I see the sofa's sold. Well, yes, mum, but the person's ignoring us, so they're going to have to go back on for sale. And it's that that she's understanding. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, been a, it's been a stressful time, but really I've enjoyed it and it's been very interesting. Mm. Um, and it's now kind of not as demanding on our time, which is good. I don't know what we'd have done without our personal eBay account, though. 320. It's Trubadors up there. Get my leg extender. Trusty Ikea leg extender. Uh, vintage Denby Troubadour casserole dish and lid. There we go. The lid is on there. It's just turned upside down. Uh, that cost £3.13. That was a Facebook Marketplace pickup. And that sold for £9.19 plus post. Regular viewers will have seen that bundle sell before. Yes, we've made lots of money on that bundle. So we're happy for the terrines <laughs> to go cheap another pen don't dismiss vintage stationery especially if you get it from auction with other stuff this is a vintage platinum so platinum but with a g in it Ooh. silver line mechanical pencil that cost 44p that took three and a half months to sell for six pound 84 plus post we've sold about 10 or 15 pens and pencils now haven't we mm. Mm. Um, Some leads and stuff. Yeah. That was all the same bundle, wasn't it? I think we've got two things left. So we've done probably 40 quid. Mm. And I think the, the lot probably didn't even cost that. Crate 18. Eleanor Boma mug. Discontinued. You mean the world to me in a box. There we go. That cost £2 and 2p. Sold for £19 and 84p within a month and a half. All this stuff that we're showing you, apart from the Troubadour and the duvet set, are from auction, by the way. Crate 18. Again. A vintage plate, porcelain, nine and a half inches, white, blue flowers, unmarked. This, I think, was possibly one of our top watched items. Uh, unmarked? It's not that one. No, it's not that one. Simon's had a tidy up in here today. It's actual floor space. It feels good. Feels nice to be organised. I've even put my bags here, uh, whereas they used to be <laughs> over, over there because that's where I used to pack and I just never moved them. But yeah. Anyway, that's beautiful. The I think that is a, that was our top watched item possibly. Cost fifty two p. Sold within six months for four ninety nine plus post. That was from auction. I can see the pattern through the back. Yeah, because it's porcelain. Crate eight. Vintage Portland Pottery Teapot Milk Jug Sugar Bowl. I no longer hit my head on my football bags. Thank God. Sugar bowl. No. Teapot Milk Jug and Sugar Bowl. The total cost for this bundle is 44p. It took three and a half months to sell again. It's an average uh, time it takes to sell yeah. at the moment. A little fox. Yeah, it's fox hunting. Poor fox. Uh, sold for £16. From auction, crate twenty-two. Yeah. Coca-Cola glasses. <laughs> times five. Ooh. Job lot. This guy sends a message that says, "I think we sent an offer." Anyway, he sends a message saying, "What's your best price?" So I replied with the price that he'd been sent an offer, which was eight pounds. Spoiler: these sold for eight pounds. So then he offers five and I declined it and then he offered six and I declined it and then he replied again and said oh I want to buy it for eight pounds in the end after all so I think I sent him an offer or something and then he took him like three days to pay and he's a seller 
So I just went onto one of his items and asked him the question, like copied and pasted the question that he asked us, just went to one of his items, what's your best price? <laughs> and he still dilly dally. So anyway, I sent him the message saying, what's your best price for this? And then he didn't reply to that, but he did pay for the glasses. Yeah, and there's a lot of glasses. However, it won't take you long to pack those and they cost 28p for total amount for yeah. those. And they sold within six months at £8 plus pay. Yeah, so obviously, you know, not, not a great pickup or whatever. Some of the Coke glasses do really well, don't they? I think it's an auction button. Yeah, I it's I a real auction. When, yeah, I remember when we got them. We didn't buy them, they were just in. Well, yeah, we did just, buy them, they were in with other things. They were just there. It's a bit of a mismatch as well, different glasses, isn't it? Yeah. It makes sense to bundle them up, get them rid of them. Yeah, um, as you can tell, our prices are quite low because we're still stuck with our reduced prices, low prices, because anything we've paid pence for, we've really slashed the price to try and encourage sales. Uh, crate five. Vintage Swinnerton's platter, oval, orange flowers. It's be this massive one, isn't it? So it's the big ones. Uh, is that it? Yeah, that cost a pound. And that, I can't believe we've had that since June. No, that's not Rummy. wrapped, so. Yeah. So that's like nine months to sell for seven pounds sixty four plus pays. Yep. Then we've got random and it's a tiny weeny item. Oh. We've had it since January. What is it? A bottle opener. Just a flat metal bottle opener. We've got one in the drawer ourselves, but not as old. No, that's not it. Is it not? Like no. A forky thing. No, we cool. haven't got one like that. No, that's not a bottle opener, that's a vase. Dark over here. An old rusty bottle opener. Yep. Rusty bottle <laughs> Rusty bottle openers can help pay the bills. This is a vintage Seymour's bottle opener, metal rusty. Well, Sherborne endorse it. Uh, cost 40p, took three and a half months to sell for £3.59 plus oh, which bills that, That'll pay for my coffee for half a day. <laughs> All adds up. Yeah. Crate five. Yeah. Uh, Dalton Bruce Oldfield salad plates, four of them. Don't tell me we haven't got them. I'll tell you what would be. Oh, oh there they are. I was going to say, because we bought some today. I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say, I knew you bought Dalton. You got these? Yeah. <laughs> that would have been incredible. Yeah. Uh, they cost £2.55. Had those ones for six months and they sold for £7 plus post. Bottom of crate five usually means it's been around for a while. Crate two. Royal Copenhagen Quaking Grass Salad Plate, gold rim. Quaking Grass? It's at the back, it's at the back there, on that pile, the bottom of the pile you were just looking at. No, the bottom of the pile you were just looking at, yes. Yes, yeah, another old one, it's in bubble wrap with a label on it saying what it is. Oh my God. I haven't done that for a while. No, that cost 97p, that was from auction as well. That sold within like 15 months for £3.59 plus post. Then we have some Simply Crochet magazines, two of them. These cost 10p for the two. They sold for 4 99 plus post. And then we have this blackboard, vintage blackboard, double-sided, wooden frame. Cost 44p, took three and a half months to sell for <laughs> £8 plus post. We hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know what you think about the talking point uh, about eBay businesses selling on personal accounts. We will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye.